Uh, hello, everyone. Um, due to some personal reason, uh, Dr. Liu can't attend this conference, so I will help him to give the presentation. Um, the title is the contribution of the beach cast seagrass wet to the greenhouse uh, emission under wet and dry conditions. And there are five parts. The first one is the introduction is, uh, as we know, the seagrass beds are a high productive ecosystem and uh, per the production will be the one the, um, kilogram uh, joy weight per square meters uh, per year. But uh, as we know, the seagrass, uh, parcel of the seagrass can be detached. So the leaf and the white soil can become the littles. And the wing and the uh, speed current dynamics will transport the uh, beach to the, the wet to the beach. So the large wet, uh, seagrass wet will accumulate on the beach. So the, um, this uh, seagrass littles and it has uh, many ecosystem functions. And first, they can uh, provide food and uh, habitat for the fauna. But uh, as we know, uh, during the deco deco uh, this decomposition, the seagrass littles uh, can become the source of the CO2. So, um, next. So, um, we, because of the title, uh, yes, the seagrass can uh, endure some uh, dry and wet condition. And in the high uh, area, the seagrass wet can uh, suffer uh, the totally the dry condition. But uh, in the low uh, position for the seagrass wet, because of the water will uh, come into the wet, so it will also induce some the wet condition. Uh, so because the moisture uh, can uh, promote the decomposition of the seagrass mat, uh, it also uh, helps to the, um, uh, push the, in the release of the dissolved organic matter and also it uh, can benefit for the micro breakdown of the, the seagrass littles. So um, our, our question is uh, how the moisture influence seagrass wet decomposition and the greenhouse uh, gas emission. Uh, as we know, uh, there are about 74 seagrass species in the world and the seagrass show the modular uh, species difference and also the competition have difference. So for example, for the MP bonus Antarctica, it has a long the, uh, vertical stem, <laughs> but for the social leaf green caddis, and it just has the um, smaller the leaves. And also the composition for the social leaf green caddis, it has the more the, the bioorganic uh, organic carbons and also the high composition waste. So uh, if we uh, chose these two seagrass uh, species, uh, this will help us to estimate the possible greenhouse uh, gas emission wage from the seagrass wet. So our aim is uh, how much of the seagrass wet uh, carbon contribute to the greenhouse gas carbon. And also the second question is that does the moisture change the greenhouse gas plants potential from seagrass wet. Uh, we collect the seagrass wet from the beach and, and we do the laboratory uh, experiment for one month. Uh, we sampled uh, seven, 11 times to do the um, experiment. And we also use the uh, spray for, uh, to create the uh, wet condition. So, um, when we get the data, we use the um, uh, double its potential functions to do the um, uh, simulation analysis. Because the seagrass wet, uh, the composition uh, divides into two phases. The first phase is the um, uh, leaching phase. The second phase is the micro uh, breakdown of the uh, seagrass needles. Uh, so this is the result. You can see that the um, uh, the um, triangle is the uh, wet condition. And for the wet condition, the seagrass wet, um, the, the CO2 flux rate 
have the sh short uh, decline bit, bit during the first line, uh, the first nine days. But for the joy condition, um, it just have the short price, soft decline uh, on the first two days. And at the end of the experiment, um, the CO2 fast wave ha has reached to the um, uh, three way more per gram per day. And you can see that uh, the double is potential model and uh, is uh, best uh, fit to this data. And uh, this is the CO2 flux amount for the two sequence risk. Uh, you can see that um, for the solster lead grain catalyst, it is uh, higher than the Amphilobolis Antarctica. Uh, because the social liquid uh, have the higher um, carbon hydrate and other uh, soluble uh, organic carbon. So it has a higher CO2 flux amount. And also uh, for the um, wet condition, both seagrasses show the higher CO2 flux in the wet condition. This is also the same to the, um, because the wet condition is benefit for the decomposition. And also, um, yes. And and this is the for the um, CO2, the, the ratio of the CO2 flux amount to the uh, total uh, wet so carbon, and also to the ratio of the wet carbon loss. Uh, you can see that the, also the in the wet condition. Both uh, species also show higher uh, ratio of the CO2 flux to the uh, biomass work. And also, the, but the, there's no difference for the CO2 flux amount for, to the wet carbon losses. So uh, for the ecological implications, uh, if the seagrass uh, west is in higher in higher position, uh, which is uh, in dual uh, high uh, frequency of the joy condition, the, uh, the emission of the CO2 will be less. So um, in the future, I think uh, it should be the um, uh, joy, yes. Uh, okay, uh, if we scaling up uh, based on our experiment, uh, we scale up to the uh, whole uh, global, the emission of the seagrass red uh, will be 0 0.63 to 9.19 million Chinese citizens for the seagrass emission from the seagrass red. So uh, the joy condition uh, can reduce the CO2 flux uh, when compared to the wet condition. This is uh, indicating that the uh, relocation of square web by coastal resource manager should be important. This can reduce the atmospheric CO2 emission and limit the global warming. So uh, many fans, oh, okay, this is the future studies. And um, studies indicate the CO2 flux of the seagrass web is uh, directed to the biomass carbon loss as a result of the decomposition. But as we know, the, um, besides the moisture and other environmental factors uh, such as the temperature and also light can also affect uh, this the, um, seagrass decomposition and also affect this the CO2 emission. So in the future, I think it should be more in experiments should be carried out to examine the effect of the other environmental factors on the decomposition and the CO2 fluxes. And also, uh, we put forward for the um, uh, manager should be um, we should also uh, do some uh, Put some put out put forward some uh, suggestion to the manager to uh, reduce the, the, the CO2 emission from the seagrass west. Uh, so um, yes, this many thanks to the these people.
So uh, thank you. Thank you, Songlin. We have time for a few questions. Songlin's left us plenty of time. Any questions or comments? Can you try? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you at any point compare it to algal rack? So you had the amount of um, emissions from the algal rack versus the seagrass. And second question, was the seagrass mixed with alga when you did this? You mean the algal seagrass west? Uh, was it mixed? Yeah. Uh, it should be missed. Yeah. Yeah, missed. So uh, we just uh, collect the seagrass uh, west from the beach to do the cement. I think it should be missed. You didn't measure the algae, you only measured the seagrass, but I'm sure it was mixed. Yes. So I think the question is whether when, when you tested the emissions, was it pure 100% seagrass, or was it seagrass with also some macroalgae? Uh, the whole is the seagrass wet. Yeah, 100% yep. seagrass. Because yeah. I suppose the point is that the macroalgae could potentially increase the decomposition rate. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yep. Yeah, it's an important component which is often neglected, the, the fate of rack. Um, okay. But as we discussed with, uh, uh, just before, yep. uh, you'd have to physically um, move the whole, as you say, the system to affect the rate of sequestration. Cause it, but something to be careful as well. People know that when wet rack builds up, it collapses, especially the Mediterranean, and goes back into the system. The consequences of that, you're losing the subsidy potential to the yep. other components of the ecology. So we have to have sort of joined up thinking. It's great for carbon sequestration maybe, but what are the consequences if you do this on a large scale to the rest of the ecology uh, to consider? And that's okay, just something yeah. just a warning on that. Okay, yeah, understand. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? I, I just have one quick one. Um, okay. You explained the difference between Zostra and Amphibolus because you yeah. think the Zostra has more sugar. Yeah. In it. Did you actually measure the soluble yeah, sugar we, uh, in both of them? Actually, measure the uh, carbon uh, and also nitrogen content. Right. Uh, we found that the the ratio of the carbon to nitrogen is uh, higher in the amphibolic um, uh, and um, Right. Yeah. So they saw the difference, significant difference in the composition. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Could you join me in thanking Song Lin? Yeah. Thank you.